Hello everyone and welcome back to Silverberry Biome. Oh and look at the colors are changing just then. Oh that's so cool. We can watch as all the bear berries change color. That is so pretty. But welcome back to Silverberry Biome. This is our Arctic Biome here in Taito Ecology and we are back to trying to manage our itty bitty ecosystems. And first off I'm noticing there's a ton of prey everywhere so that seems to be a pretty good thing. And we still have bear berries uh, floating around which well they're you know their roots are securely in the ground but you know what I mean so that's a good thing too I guess the question of the day is going to be looking over our lynx population and it's been so exciting to see how many of you guys have a pretty good knowledge was that a little pile of bones <gasps> so somebody has been eaten here recently you can see the tiny little femurs oh my gosh and the little pelvic bones are over here yep it looks like somebody has been eaten but it's been really fun to see how many of you guys have a really great knowledge of uh, predator and prey dynamics and population pressures for real life situations but don't forget you guys this is Taito Ecology so we're not going to have the spread of prey as you would normally have in real life to kind of catch up with oh good we do have some lynx I spy some baby lynx but we don't have the spread of prey like we would normally have in real life where if there's an open slot in the ecosystem something is going to come in and fill that slot somehow in the game we really are more controlled by the territory it seems so how far certain creatures will be willing to go for food and where we place the territory seem to be the most important aspect of the coding of the game but I've been so proud of you guys who really have a great grasp of what it would be like in real life if you had this many lynx then you would just have a natural die off or even you wouldn't have them breeding as often as you do a lot of animals when they have a problem with not getting enough food will not invest the resources in having babies <gasps> it's the ground squirrel look at this little guy what are you doing here with that beautiful back but yeah and actually in real life a lot of animals if they do not have the resources to be able to feed themselves or their young will actually produce hormones that will inhibit them or it just not even produce the hormones that would allow them in the first place to mate and have babies they just wouldn't be interested they go mm, maybe next year and they would wait until there was enough prey and then they would have very specific release of certain hormones telling them hey it's that time of year the temperature is right the food sources are right the fat content that I'm getting from my prey are right and that would spur them to have babies these links are not so smart these links just keep having baby after baby after baby and so we're going to see how the populations have fared over the last three months it's been three months in the game after all and once we get a good view of that I think today is the day we may introduce the wolverine. The wolverine will hopefully be able to keep the lynx population in check if it still needs to be kept in check. So without further ado, let's check the territory markers. All right, the ermines. Ooh, the ermines split. Unless I, no, I didn't put down another population. So the ermine population did indeed split. And they are, they are holding pretty steady. I'm actually pretty surprised by how steady they keep uh, they keep going. It looks like we have a lot of populations of rabbits. And like I was just mentioning before, it seems to be where you put them territory-wise that determines whether or not they're going to survive rather than how many. Um, so I'm thinking what we may do is stick to trying to keep a lot of our, our arctic hares and limbing populations, our small prey populations, kind of on the edge of the lynx territory to force the lynx to have to go a little bit further to get their food and then I'm also thinking to try to encourage there to be enough prey we may really start spreading the arctic hare population in a big circle instead of doing these little clusters like I've traditionally done I want to see what would happen if we just turned away turned a blind eye to a big circle of different prey so we're going to put in some trees we're going to make a ring of trees <gasps> look and these trees are starting to spread that's so exciting but we're going to make a nice big ring of trees and then we're going to make a line of the prey animals and we're going to see what happens if we just leave them unchecked for a while. Are they going to overeat the plants? Are they going to more or less be able to regulate themselves? What happens when we start adding in some of the larger herbivores? What happens when we start adding in the predators? It's going to be really fun just to keep an eye on all of those different population dynamics. And are those baby plants? They're baby plants! Oh my gosh, you guys, look how teensy tiny! Oh, they're so cute. I love those flowers. Those are very cute. All right, what do we have going on over here? More baby plants. I spy with my little eye. A more itty bitty teeny tiny little plants are growing over there too. I'm not sure if I placed those myself, but I think I put these ones down down here. So yeah, if we're having a little bit of spread there. 
how are our populations over here? The Arctic ground squirrel hunger. Okay, that's better. So they're doing okay. The lemmings are doing okay. And the Arctic hares are going to be reproducing soon. So let's start today with checking. Let's see, Arctic hares have died. Lemmings have split in zone one. That's a good sign that their population is holding pretty steady. Uh, a group of lynx is starving. We were really having that issue. How many lynx do we have left? Oh, and it looks like this, oh my gosh, the jewel lichen is almost gone. So it seems like our Arctic animals really do rely on these little jewel lichen for a lot of food. And then how are our caribou doing? They look so much smaller than I remember. How are you, caribou? I remember you being a lot bigger than this. There we go. Caribou, what are they primarily going to eat? Content to graze, caribou are herbivores that seek out willow, mushrooms, and other ground-dwelling vegetation. They also consume lichen in winter when other forms of vegetation are scarce. And let's see, predators, caribou calves are vulnerable to bears, wolves, and other predators for the first week after their birth. By traveling in herds, most adult caribou steer clear of predators, save for the sick and elderly. Noted. And notes, thanks to their tendency to travel in herds, caribou can can designate a large number of individuals as lookouts for predators. So good to know they should be safe from predators. We've got a lot of hungry little mouths over here. Um, so I'm gonna throw down another one of the jewel lichen because it seems to be extremely popular as food. And I'll put in some more mushrooms then if the caribou like it. And another caribou moss. We'll start speeding things up so our energy returns pretty quickly too. And I do wanna try to get more of this cotton grass. Um, even though it's like nigh impossible to see sometimes. I want to get some more of the cotton grass down because it said that the, the caribou like to graze on the cotton grass too. So I'm hoping if we put down a little patch, it'll spread pretty quickly. Is it just me or did the snow start vanishing from this area? Interesting. All right, and I'm going to surround this with a little bit of diamond leaf willow too. Oh my goodness, it looks like we have some hungry little mouths <laughs> running straight for us. Okay, well, I'll have to remember that they're they're liking, um, they're liking this grass too. And we'll put in some bear berries on either side. And hopefully that's enough biodiversity to keep all of the little herbivore mouths busy and they won't just eat everything all at once. All right, and then speaking of hungry little herbivore mouths, let's see, group of lemmings has a low population. Let's pop up here. How many lynx have we lost? We still have 10 juveniles. <laughs> Somehow the lynx populations are holding in there, but probably because they ate all of the Arctic hare populations I had put down. Um, so I'm going to test my theory because this is where real world biology, I need some of the lynx to actually die off. Uh, that's way too many lynx babies and they are just breeding up a storm. Hey, what are you doing in the Arctic hare? They're just breeding up a storm. It's only another three weeks before reproduction. That's just not a sustainable number of lynx. So they're either going to starve to death, but the bad thing that happens when they starve to death here in, uh, Taito Ecology is they all will die. They will literally eat every every prey item in their territory that they can possibly reach and they will all die. And what normally happens in real life is you will have a chunk of the population die when there's not enough food, but usually it's not going to be the entire population just crashing like that unless something devastating has happened. That would be an ecological collapse, not ecological balance. So I think it's time to provide a little bit of the ecological balance that I am so desperate to see. And hmm, this looks like a big empty patch. I should probably fill it with trees and, and mushrooms and plants and things. Let's see. Let's try some jewel lichen. It's just so popular. All of the little animals like it a lot. And where, oh where, not the arctic fox, not the wolf, but the wolverine. So let's do a little bit of reading up on the wolverine and make sure that he's going to be the right choice to help rescue my populations of lynx. We're having too many lynx and they need to suppress that. Like I said, in real life, if they didn't have this much food, they wouldn't go off and have more kits when they can't even feed themselves. Or there would at least be a little bit more balance where the strongest lynx get enough food and not all of them just keep collapsing. So wolverine Wolverine. Diet. Wolverines, oh, there we go, eat a variety of food from small eggs to mammals up to five times their size. They are happy to scavenge carrion and will aggressively drive off larger animals from their kills. Hmm. Because they are well adapted to moving in snow, they can prey on animals trapped in it. Pre uh, predators boasting few natural predators due to their aggressive nature. Wolverines are threatened by wolves, mountain lions, bears, and golden eagles. It would be really cool if we had golden eagles. That would be awesome. They will typically climb 
climb a tree to evade their would-be predators. Notes, boasting semi-retractable claws and powerful jaws, wolverines can crush the bones of their prey. Okay, I think that sounds like a pretty tough guy. Gotta admit. So I'm gonna say, how's our ground squirrel population doing? They're starting to be preyed on a little bit. So let's go ahead and put in the wolverine. Um, I'm kind of nervous. I don't know how much of the other populations he may start eating, but I think that he would be good to balance out our lynx. And again, it's very important to think about where we place the territories, not just that they exist, but where they are, because I think that'll determine just how far they have to go to interact with one another. So I think this wolverine is going to have the scent of so many delicious little lynx babies, but also so many delicious hares. And we'll put him down here, and it may just be like throwing the lion in with the sheep. But we'll have to see what the wolverine does. All right, let's go. Let's go check him out. All right, what are we doing, buddy? He's off to get something. Maybe I should have put him closer to the actual lynx, because I think he's just gonna go for the bunnies. Gosh darn it! No, turn that way. Turn that way. You're two years, eight weeks old, huh? No, turn around. I need you to keep my lynx population in check, not go harass my, my bunny population some more. All right, so you know what? I'm gonna add two of them. That's one wolverine. Let's see where the edge of his territory is. I think I need to put another wolverine like right in the heart of lynx territory. And I'm gonna put him over, or this one over here. And then we'll see what that wolverine does. And I also think it is, yet again, time to try to help some of our prey populations recover. What if I do like a whole little, what if I have just like a gigantic family of lemmings that lives down there? Are they, is it just going to be a massacre? Or possibly will I have, possibly will I have some survivors who will be able to make a life down there? All right, let me put some bear berries down here and then maybe another white spruce. Can't really fit in another white spruce down there. Maybe a little wall of the diamond leaf willows. All right, and let's go ahead and turn off territory markers for just a moment because we can see everything a little better. And I think this is the opposite of what I was going for and the ground squirrel is just watching. Oh dear. Well, this is the opposite of what I thought would happen. So I really, really do have a wild lynx problem to be completely honest, because I was really hoping that this would end with the wolverine being the one to chase something down. Now this lynx cub is possibly about to die of hunger though. <gasps> is it? Uh oh. Oh my gosh. Are you too? Nope. Run ground squirrel. I was trying. No. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Who's going to win this fight? The predators are really fighting. It is a predator fight. What? I didn't anticipate that. The Wolverine lost. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys, we have a wild lynx problem. It's like they're forming their own their own groups. They don't even hunt in, in groups like this, this, like this, this at least. And this is, oh my gosh, and here comes mama. Really? And then the babies got too tired. No, they, they're dead? They just, did they just starve? Oh my gosh, they're starving to death. <gasps> mama, I'm so sorry. Now she's gonna starve to death. And there's a ground squirrel. Why did you guys eat the ground squirrel? It's gone, somebody ate all of it. Oh, the Wolverine! Oh my gosh! It's dead. Well, that didn't go the way I was I was hoping it would. We might need to go up on predators, you guys. We might need to go for something a little bit bigger. Um, hmm. That turned out very interesting. Alright. Well, the good news is that some of our juveniles um, have died of hunger, which isn't really good news, but it does show that there, there may be some sense of balancing it out if we can just keep an eye on things. <sighs> it really is quantity. It's that pyramid effect we talk about with having enough. Um, it's that pyramid effect we have talked about before too, with having enough of a prey population to support a predator population. It's hard. It's really hard. You, it's a pyramid. So you need a ton of things on the foundation. You need a ton of prey items on the foundation, and then it builds up 
to the tiny little peak where you just have one or two little predators at the top who can be able to survive off of all of the prey that they eat. So let's put down a bunch of bear berries. We're going to try doing some some limbing patches where I just put down like a three a three group of limbing and I provide them with all of the food that they may need back here. Let's put in some mushrooms. And I think we're going to need something a little tougher to be able to keep the links in balance. Hmm. But I don't want to add too many things because I don't want to take out too many of the the predators either. It's not like you want to wipe any group out. It's like you're trying to play a gigantic game of Jen Jenga where you're balancing everything. Only this time it's with animals and their little lives and their needs and, and what pushes them and drives them. All of those things. All right, we'll add a little pollinator down there. Hmm, and I will admit we will start doing, to kind of alternate with our arctic biome, after we get all of the animals in, we will start doing the 100 year biome with the Himalaya biome, because I think that would be stunning. I love the arctic biome, but the Himalayan biome has so many beautiful flowers that just take my breath away too. Plus, I love seeing some of those creatures breed and, and just populate the area. It's amazing. All right, so let's see, what's next? Is that my wolverine? Or is that, is that just a, a sleeping caribou? Do you sleep like that? Or do you just like stand in real life? He looks a little hungry, so we'll start providing a bit of food for him. I think that he enjoys the cotton grass too. Maybe I'll put cotton grass down and then I'll put some caribou moss. And we'll see if he reacts to either of it. A group of caribou moss has died. The group I just put down? Really? Why? It's moss. Did it not have enough to... Huh. Well, that was interesting. The group of moss died. I've never had a group of moss die on me. That's that's a little bit peculiar. Not gonna lie. All right. How are the caribou doing? Why are you guys still a little hungry? We'll have to keep an eye on them. All right. So the other thing I want to do today, like I mentioned at the very, very beginning, is start that line of plants and start that line of animals so we can start making a big giant forest that can hopefully support itself and I guess I technically don't need the white spruce tree to be able to feed my bunnies the little bunny populations I'm daydreaming of so I'll make a little line of bear berries and a little line of the jewel lichen as I am able to and we will start making a line of arctic hares that can just go straight down this way what's your problem arctic hares you're okay okay they're doing okay they just needed to load in. All right, and where is my jeweled lichen? There we go. And the Arctic hare should be okay. They've got a really wide range. They're big in real life, by the way, you guys. I saw a picture of Arctic hares uh, while I was looking at a bunch of animal pictures just yesterday, and I was stunned because they're so much bigger than I thought they would be. Let's get a little bit of cotton grass in. And then I think we will leave the biome to run for a little while. We do have some Arctic hare territories really struggling. Yeah, there's just juveniles in some, one juvenile in some, only one juvenile in others. Um, so I'll put some Arctic hares way out here. Maybe adding in that wolverine was a bad idea. <laughs> but I, I was worth, I think it was worth an experiment, but man, this is a tricky balancing game. All right, a group of Arctic hares has died. Hmm. And the lichen is getting a lot of attention. I wonder why, do I need to just have that many more? So I wonder if we should have the little red rocks pretty much just scattered all over the place. Two weeks until they have babies. The caribou are gonna do good. That makes me happy at least. I guess I just need to have like these jeweled lichen all, all, all over the place. So I'm really beginning to become quite curious about what a successful Arctic biome would look like. I think it's going to look something like this, but we keep struggling when it comes to the animal population over here. We're up to 11 juveniles on the lynx territory, losing my lemming population. So I think all I did, unfortunately, was just encourage my lynx to continue to try to have tons and tons of babies. You can see where my lemming population is thriving down here, but we're running into the problem of they are out eating their resources. So I don't think it'll be long before they start coming to try to eat these guys. Let me put down another few jeweled lichen. Who knows, maybe this will be like our little heroic lemming family who will be able to continue breeding and having babies, at defying the odds in a world ruled by a wild lynx problem. 
And then next time we might have to kick things up to somebody a little bit tougher. I'm a little bit hesitant to say it, but we might have to move into Arctic Wolves or something like that just so that our, our links will be able to be kept in check. As it is, they're just kind of like going absolutely bonkers and ending every single creature we throw in here. The prey items are not having a chance. I don't know if the Arctic Fox would just focus on the Arctic Hares. Um, the Wolverine ended up becoming prey for the Lynx, so we may have to go up a level and we may have to try out, uh, say, the Grizzly Bear, Polar Bear, or the Arctic Wolves. The Wolves, I think, would be a mistake because they're a big social group. That's six animals to individually feed. So we may start with, hmm, Moose? We may start with moose to start preparing the land for polar bears. Oh my gosh, I'm not even sure which decision, which decision to go with first. So this is gonna be quite interesting. This is a lot harder than I remember, you guys. And again, it's not just about the real world principles of it, but it's also about figuring out territory ranges and territory locales. What is that? <gasps> Did they just have babies? You guys, we have little tiny caribou babies. That's so cute. And the lynx have come over here. Are they gonna start messing with the caribou babies? All right, well, next time we'll check out the caribou babies and we'll try to make more sense of this. And I will see you guys then. Bye-bye.